So this was another memorable flight and my longest ever so far. It was 2 hours 49 with a takeoff time of 7.11. That GPS there is the, the start's been delayed. Uh, 66 miles. Um, so the goal for this flight is to fly to central Milton Keynes from Little Granston via Woburn and Woburn Abbey. So I'll leave you with the takeoff, which is a bit dodgy. Um, it's almost nil wind with a temperature around 1 degree C. A slightly challenging takeoff in the wind with a, a full tank of around 16 litres, but uh, got away with it. So, a lovely, bright, cold morning. This disused airfield here is Tempsford, and uh, it's very close to Little Grands and was part of the Royal Air Force Special Duty Service and was perhaps the most secret airfield of the Second World War and home to two special duty squadrons which dropped supplies and agents into occupied Europe for the Special Operations Executive. So I'm on my way over to Carlington Hangars, which was started in 1915 by the Short Brothers to build airships for the Admiralty. Uh, they were nationalised in 1919 and it became the Royal Airship Works. And during World War II it was used to build barrage balloons and became the RAF Balloon Training Unit. In 1943 it was home to the RAF Meteorological Research Balloons Unit and has been used for many things since the war. After 1971 it was used as a fire research station for investigating gas and fire explosions. It was used to host the indoor model flying championships in the 70s and 80s and it's currently used for filmmaking. There's a long list of films you can look on Wikipedia but it's too long to mention here. Uh, quite well known films. And the hangars were refurbished in 2015 with new roofs and the site is still used today for meteorological purposes. You can't normally fly over this but because it's a weekend um, we have permission to, to fly over it. I don't think any, there are any weather balloons or any meteorological activity happening at the weekend, so I thought I would uh, fly low over the hangars. So this is the beginnings of a new town called the Wixons. It's a brownfield site which used to be called Elstow Storage Depot. And it was eventually had four and a half thousand homes. And in World War II was the Royal Ordnance Factory, which filled and packed munitions, including cartridges, high explosives, and 4,000 pound bombs and shells. Um, even later on, up to 22,000 pound bombs were filled here. And it used to have 250 buildings, but none of them ever appeared in maps. And it was proposed as a site for the UK nuclear waste, but after protests never happened. And um, this here is Stuartby which is the disused London Brickworks, um, which closed in May 2008. I've got another video on this, I did fly low and uh, around it, so if you want to see more about that, look for the one and called the Disused Brickworks video for more info on that one. So we've had a very cold but dry April and the farmer here is feeding his sheep. I'm just on the outskirts of Cranfield Air Traffic Zone, or Aerodrome Traffic Zone it's called. So I'm just keeping away for any aircraft that may be taking off and landing, just staying low. Um, the runway is only about two miles away, so just mindful of that. And we're coming up to Newport Pagnell here, which is very close to Milton Keynes. And from 1954 to 2007, the town was home to Aston Martin, but that has now since moved to Warwickshire. And here we are Milton Keynes, I'm just crossing over the M1 now. Um, so Milton Keynes is located 50 miles northwest of London and is a new town to relieve housing congestion in London and had a target population of 250,000 people. I'm not sure if that's been met now, it probably has. 
Um, it's got a, a, a unique and it's got a relaxed grid system for the main artery roads through the city and um, that reduces traffic congestion. They're all linked up by roundabouts. And um, originally the buildings had a height limit of three storeys outside the city centre and inside was limited to five but I think that's since been relaxed for the city centre. So the idea is that no building should be higher than the, the tallest tree. So quite an interesting place. There's the uh, city centre there. So heading south now from central Milton Keynes down towards Bletchley and that's those see those straight houses there below they are that's Netherfield which is one of the one of the first estates to be built in Milton Keynes and beyond that we have kind of a big industrial area we've got the stadium MK which has got some shops and it's got IKEA big Asda there and that's the MK Dons football stadium I'll take a photo of it here and um, that's, this is Bletchley ahead. So Bletchley has been, been there for a long time um, but was engulfed by Milton Keynes in the 70s and obviously was home to Bletchley Park to the right of the railway which was used to decode the Enigma and Lorenz ciphers in World War II. So that's Dobby's Garden Centre down there on the right. So I'm just heading over the A5 now towards Woburn and Woburn Town was first settled in 969 AD and is five miles away from Milton Keynes. It's a really nice place and uh, actually burned down three times and was last rebuilt in 1724 and it's known for Woburn Abbey which is down there below us which is also the, is the home of the Duke of Bedford and it's also open to the public on some days it was built in 1145 as a monastery but was destroyed and rebuilt as a family home in 1744 the safari park down below us here was added in the 70s to partly to pay off death duties. So I'm heading back now towards Little Granston and uh, this is the M1 so I'm flying back over the M1 heading east and then I'll head northeast towards Little Granston airfield. But before I do, taking a trip over Rest Park in Silso in Bedfordshire which is a country house which was rebuilt in 1834 and inspired by its owner by architecture seen in Paris. So uh, that's a very nice place, got lovely gardens, uh, including a formal 18th century garden and an orangery and pavilion. So this is uh, Mepeshaw Airfield, which they do aircraft servicing, I think. So there we are, so I've managed to edit down a nearly three hour flight into ten minutes. Uh, there was a lot more to see but I didn't want to keep the video too long. And I'm um, coming into land now and um, have a bit of an interesting landing because my, my warm gloves are quite thick, I don't, I'm not, don't wear these gloves very often but I couldn't find the kill switch. So a bit of an interesting one. And Ed very kindly caught my dodgy landing on camera from his phone so I'll just show that here. <laughs> Interesting technique. <laughs> That's it for this one. If you enjoyed it, give me a thumbs up. And if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.